had equipped the staff with suits that allowed no skin to be exposed. It would be another three weeks before the CDC made this its new standard. Then, the hospital moved out all of the patients in medical intensive care and reconfigured the 24-bed unit for just one patient, Ibn Mulligan. By the time I came in, they had already received the Tyvex, the Pappers, so we had the full hazmat gear that people are used to seeing. Is this the full suit? This is the full suit, yeah. Um, there were always two of us in the room at all times, and we were designated two people to be in there. Mm -hmm. I've been in healthcare for nearly 20 years, and I've never emptied as much trash, uh, just from the waste of, of his constant diarrhea mm -hmm. um, that he was having was, it was remarkable. Um, and we had these longer surgical type gloves on. They were taped to the Tyvek suit, full headgear with a, um, a circulator with a HEPA filter that would plug into the back. And the first time I got out of that suit, it literally looked like someone had pushed me into a swimming pool. I Absolutely. was drenched. They were working 16 to 18 hour days, spending two hours at a time in Duncan's room. And we held his hand and talked to him and comforted him because his family couldn't be there. You held his hand through the spacesuit. I did. He was glad someone wasn't afraid to take care of him. Yeah. And we weren't. I have nothing but respect and admiration for everyone uh, that was involved in his, in his care. You know, I, everyone has someone in their lives that, that, they, that they love and they care about. I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old, and my wife is pregnant, and the mortality rate for pregnant women with Ebola is, is essentially 100%. But Richard, why don't you go to the administration and say, you know, I'm sorry, but my wife is pregnant? People were allowed to um, request not to be um, tasked with his with his care. But we asked for volunteers. Everyone yeah. volunteered. Everyone was a Every volunteer. Person, Everyone housekeeping, was there respiratory, to be there. physicians, nurses. But despite all the volunteers, Duncan grew worse. An experimental drug wasn't helping. Early Saturday morning, he had become very critically ill um, and was placed on a respirator. He was intubated. He was intubated. Tube down his throat. Tube down his throat. He had a um, dialysis catheter placed because his, um, he was not making the urine that he needed to. He was heavily sedated, and he had tears rolling down his eyes rolling down his face, and not just a normal watering from a sedated person. They, this was in the form of tears. And I grabbed a tissue, and I wiped his eyes, and I said, you're going to be OK. You just get the rest that you need. Let us do the rest for you. And it wasn't 15 minutes later, I couldn't find a pulse.